They said Yellowstone was sleeping, that the ancient caldera beneath its serene lakes and whispering pines rested in geological silence. But what if the mountain that breathes fire was never truly asleep? What if something unseen, something we have no name for, has been stirring beneath our feet all along? A few months ago, deep in the heart of Wyoming, the instruments began to lie. At least that's what scientists thought at first. Seismographs flickered with irregular pulses, not tremors, but oscillations, rhythmic, almost deliberate. The readings came in waves, like a heartbeat that didn't belong to the Earth at all. Was the planet communicating, or was something else trying to speak through it? When the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory released its monthly report that spring, it looked routine, minor uplift in the Norris Geyser Basin, a few microquakes along the eastern rim, slight changes in ground deformation. Harmless, they said. Typical activity. The public slept easy. But the data, the raw, unfiltered data, told a different story. Hidden in the noise was a pattern. Every 49 hours and 13 minutes, a pulse of energy rippled upward from nearly 50 kilometres, 31 miles, beneath the crust. It wasn't seismic, magnetic or geothermal. It didn't behave like anything the team had seen before. In the words of one geophysicist who later spoke under condition of anonymity, it was like the heartbeat of something waking up. By early May, that pulse had doubled in intensity. By June, it had tripled. The hot spot beneath Yellowstone, the very engine that fuels its geysers and boiling pools, was supercharging but no known natural process could explain it. Some whispered it was solar activity, though solar flares cannot reach that deep into the mantle. Others suggested cosmic radiation, but the timing didn't match. The strangest theory came from an independent researcher named Dr. Lydia Crane, a former volcanologist turned rogue geochemist who vanished from public view after being dismissed from her university post two years ago. She called it the resonance. In an unpublished paper leaked onto a fringe geological forum, Crane argued that hotspots like Yellowstone might act as conduits for external vibrational frequencies, cosmic or otherwise, that could interact with the molten layers of the planet. Her theory was dismissed as pseudoscience. Yet, as the pulses intensified, fragments of her work resurfaced online. And then the anomalies began. Thermal imaging from satellites recorded heat spikes across Yellowstone Lake, perfect circular gradients appearing and disappearing within minutes. Fishermen reported feeling a low hum beneath their boats, like an electric current through the water. Rangers dismissed it as seismic noise. But when one of them recorded the sound on a handheld hydrophone, the waveform pattern matched something previously captured only once, at the bottom of the Mariana Trench in 2014. Coincidence or connection? If this was just geothermal activity, why were identical signals appearing simultaneously across two of the planet's most remote volcanic systems, Yellowstone and the Tonga Arc? By midsummer, journalists began asking questions. The U.S. Geological Survey tightened access to real-time seismic feeds. Data streams were rerouted through private servers. A few curious researchers who posted irregularities online found their posts quietly scrubbed within hours. And then, in late July, something happened that no one could ignore. A series of microquakes rippled across the park, nothing larger than magnitude 2.1, yet visitors standing near the old faithful geyser reported seeing the plume erupt nearly twice its usual height. Others described flashes of bluish light beneath the steam, fleeting and silent, like underwater lightning. 
Videos flooded social media before disappearing mysteriously. Accounts were suspended, but some fragments survived. One clip, time-stamped July 23, 2025, shows the geyser's eruption framed against a twilight sky. For a fraction of a second, a faint ring of luminescence, perfectly circular, can be seen expanding outward across the basin. Experts called it lens flare. Photographers disagreed. So what was it? The pattern of light matched the waveform frequency from Crane's resonance model almost exactly. And then the temperature rose. Sensors across the caldera detected a uniform increase of 3 degrees Celsius, 5.5 degrees Fahrenheit, in less than 12 hours. Pressure readings in deep boreholes spiked. Gas ratios shifted. Carbon dioxide output doubled overnight. Seasonal variation. But there were no official explanations when bison herds began to migrate north, weeks ahead of schedule, crossing roads and fields in chaotic herds. Locals who've lived near the park their whole lives swore they'd never seen anything like it. Animals sense things long before we do. That's when the whispers began, not from scientists, but from the workers inside the park. Maintenance staff reported power surges in the geothermal monitoring grid, as though something underground was feeding energy back into the system. A drone operator claimed his craft was pulled off course by an invisible force while flying over the mud volcano area and several field cameras caught faint electromagnetic distortions in the air, shimmering waves, bending light in patterns that shouldn't exist outside of extreme heat. Only the air wasn't hot. It was humming. As weeks passed, more evidence emerged that the hotspot wasn't just heating up, it was evolving. New vents appeared where there had been none before. Streams, once lukewarm, now boiled furiously. Infrared surveys detected symmetrical temperature signatures aligned in hexagonal patterns across several kilometers. Nature doesn't make hexagons. Instrumental artifacts. If this was natural, it was the most precise accident in geological history. By September, the pulse returned, stronger than ever. Sensors in Idaho and Montana began registering sympathetic tremors, like echoes radiating from Yellowstone's heart. And yet there was no eruption, no explosion, only silence between beats. Then came the night of September 21st. At 2.34 in the morning, residents in Gardner, Montana, reported seeing an aurora-like glow hanging low over the northern horizon. Not green, but gold, and moving against the wind. Power flickered. Phones lost signal. A faint, low-frequency vibration shook through the ground, lasting nearly five minutes. The next morning, the pulse stopped. For the first time in months, Yellowstone went quiet. But the quiet was worse than the noise. Because when they checked the thermal data again, they found something that defied explanation. A void. A perfectly circular zone of cooled rock nearly ten kilometers, six miles across, deep beneath the central magma chamber, where heat had simply vanished. Vanished. As if something had absorbed it. And if Crane's theory was right, that could mean only one thing. The energy had gone somewhere, or to something. The calm didn't feel natural. It felt rehearsed. Instruments across the park had gone silent, but every so often they whispered tiny voltage spikes, a nervous pulse buried in the static. On October 2nd, an amateur radio operator near Cody picked up a tone on an unused band, looping every 59 seconds. Within hours, identical signals were logged in Idaho, Montana, and northern Utah. The sound wasn't noise. When plotted, it formed a six-sided symmetry, 
the same geometry once seen beneath the caldera. No one wanted to say it, but the pulse was back, only now it wasn't coming from underground, it was in the air. Three nights later, power grids near West Yellowstone flickered at 2.30 at pre-dawn. A low vibration rolled through the valley, strong enough to rattle windows, but too soft to register as a quake. Drivers pulled to the roadside, staring at a golden haze, gliding against the wind. Phones froze, cameras refused to focus, then everything went dark. By dawn, the hum had spread. Shortwave enthusiasts across the northwest recorded identical interference, each cycle arriving with millisecond precision, as if directed by something intelligent. The U.S. Geological Survey blamed solar activity, yet the sun was quiet. That same morning a forgotten name resurfaced, Dr. Lydia Crane. A post appeared under her encrypted ID, just four words, Phase 2 has shifted mediums. Attached was a blurred spectrogram. When inverted, the noise formed a map of the western United States, dotted with faint nodes from Yellowstone to the Cascades. In the corner she'd scrawled a question. Still think it's geological? Then she vanished again. Sensors inside the park started misbehaving. Batteries drained. Readings oscillated as if drawing power from somewhere else. Atmospheric data showed invisible distortions, ripples in the air bending light like heat mirage, except the temperature didn't change. European satellites caught the same anomaly a faint golden halo pulsing once every 49 hours and 13 minutes. Officials called it reflection. Independent analysts called it impossible. On October 5th, a private satellite registered a burst of microwave energy over Yellowstone Lake, half a second long, sharp enough to blind detectors in orbit. It wasn't lightning, it was too structured. When overlaid on old data, the flash aligned perfectly with the hexagonal nodes that had appeared months before. Something had reactivated. Crane's earlier theory, once dismissed as pseudoscience, suddenly looked prophetic. The hotspot as an antenna, a planetary transceiver reaching beyond the crust. If she was right, the pulse wasn't a symptom of volcanic pressure. It was communication. And maybe it had just received a reply. Locals began reporting strange behaviour in wildlife. Elk herds clustered at night along the northern rim, facing one direction as if drawn by a sound no human could hear. Hikers described a metallic taste in the air, the same one felt before lightning strikes. Drones flown over restricted zones, lost GPS, spinning until batteries died mid-flight. A leaked Department of Energy brief mentioned localised magnetic disassociation events. Translation, the magnetic field was fracturing in small, moving pockets. Compasses twisted 15 degrees and snapped back. Instruments inside those pockets lost calibration entirely. Whatever was awakening didn't follow physics. It rewrote them. Satellite overlays showed the anomalies migrating northwest in a straight line toward the Pacific. Scientists called it coincidence until one analyst noticed the intervals matched seismic echoes under Mount Rainier. Yellowstone was talking to another volcano, but the conversation was one way. Late on October 6th, the same minute the original pulse vanished weeks ago, the hum stopped. Then a new sound emerged, seven seconds of patterned static captured on hundreds of receivers nationwide. When converted to binary, the signal translated to repeating coordinates centred directly over the caldera. It wasn't random. It was a message. No agency has confirmed it, yet power surges that night tripped sensors from Wyoming to Nevada. In archive telemetry, the waveform looks like a heartbeat that skipped once, then resumed slower, heavier, 
deliberate. The following morning, Yellowstone looked serene again. Steam drifted softly over the pools. Tourists snapped pictures, and the official report declared activity remains within normal limits. But satellites tell another story. In the infrared spectrum, faint symmetrical halos still orbit the park, six-sided, breathing once every two days. Each pulse is weaker, as if something beneath the earth is listening, not sending. If Crane's resonance theory holds, the hotspot isn't merely geothermal. It's a conduit, a bridge between frequencies we don't yet understand. The energy that vanished weeks ago didn't die. It transformed. Maybe it crossed the threshold between geology and thought. Maybe Yellowstone has become a receiver for signals older than the crust itself. Whatever it is, it's not finished. So if you ever visit the park and feel that pressure in your ears, that low hum at the edge of hearing, remember this moment. The world's largest volcano might not be preparing to erupt with magma, but with information. And when that message finally surfaces, it won't come through ash and smoke. It'll come through the air, carried on a frequency we can't yet decode. Until then, listen closely. The quiet isn't peace, it's waiting. If this mystery pulled you in, hit like, share, and subscribe for more deep file investigations. Tap that hype icon to stay ahead of the signal, because whatever's whispering beneath Yellowstone may not stay silent for long.